Hello everyone. We will continue with the radial nerve class, which where we have covered the radial nerve part one in the previous video, in which we have covered the origin and course and branches in the arm. Now we will continue with the course of the radial nerve and branches of the radial nerve in the forearm, including the applied anatomy. So we will now start with the course of the radial nerve in the forearm. Forearm. This radial nerve now has entered. You have to see it has entered from the posterior part of the. We will take the other color from the posterior part of the arm by piercing the lateral intramuscular septum. It has entered the front of the arm between the brachialis muscle will be here and brachioradialis muscle. Here will be the brachioradialis muscle origin. So between the two muscles, it has entered over the lateral epicondyle. Oh, by piercing the lateral intramuscular septum, it has entered, and over the lateral epicondyle, it bifurcates into deep branch. One branch you are seeing bifurcates into deep branch, and this is the superficial branch. Just before its division, you have should have learned it appears in the Lateral most part of the cubital fossa. Do you recollect? So here is the cubital fossa. So this is the cubital fossa. In the cubital fossa, the radial nerve appears in the lateral most as a lateral most contact. That's how it appears between the brachialis and brachioradialis in the between the brachialis and brachioradialis. That's how it appears in the cubital fossa. It has already divided into deep branch and superficial branch. So now we have to take an important point: is deep branch is the motor, and superficial branch is the sensory. So this point you have to take. This deep branch is predominantly motor, and it will be called as the posterior interosseous nerve. This deep branch of radial nerve is called as Posterior intraosseous nerve. We should have learned anterior intraosseous nerve is the branch of median nerve. Now this posterior intraosseous nerve is the deep branch of radial nerve. Passes between this. This is the deep branch. We should follow this deep branch. Passes between this deep and superficial heads of the pronate arteries. So this is the anterior view and this is the posterior view of forearm. You have to. Understand the picture. So it is in the front of the arm. It has divided into two branches: deep branch and superficial branch. This deep branch is passing between the two strata of the supinator muscle, two layers. So this is the supinator muscle. You have to see. This muscle is the supinator. Between these two layers of the supinator muscle. This nerve enters the deep branch, otherwise called posterior intraosseous branch. Enters the posterior part of the forearm along with the posterior intraosseous artery, which is a branch of the ulnar artery. The superficial branch we will see first. The superficial branch is purely sensory. Passes here in this part in the front of the forearm. It passes. On the anterolateral aspect of the forearm, deep to the brachioradialis muscle, this nerve is deep to brachioradialis muscle, which will be appearing in the front of forearm. Actually, this muscle is the back of forearm muscle, but it appears in the front of forearm, along with the radial artery. So it is be lying along with the superficial branch, lying along with the radial artery. Approximately two thirds of the way down the forearm, the superficial branch of the radial nerve passes laterally and posteriorly around the radial side of the forearm, deep to the tendon of brachioradialis. Then the nerve enters the this nerve winds round and enters passes over the roof of the anatomical snuff box. So you have to know what is roof of. Anatomical snuff box under the 
boundaries of the anatomical stuff box so this superficial branch passes over the roof of the anatomical stuff box and enters the dorsum of the hand so this is the course of the superficial branch of the radial nerve in the front of forearm the superficial branch is running in the front of forearm deep to the brachioradialis muscle along with the radial artery then it winds round the front of forearm to pass over the roof of anatomical stuff box that enters the dorsum of the hand this deep branch is predominantly motor and it passes in this passes between the two layers of the spinator muscle and it enters the posterior part of the forearm along with the posterior intraarticular artery it supplies all the muscles in the posterior part of the forearm so this deep branch is the motor and the superficial branch is the sensory now we will see the branches of this uh, radial nerve in the back of and the back of forearm and also what are the muscles supplied by the posterior intraarticular nerve what are the muscles supplied by directly by the radial nerve and what are the muscles supplied by the direct uh, supplied by the posterior intraarticular nerve directly so we should learn already this radial nerve is the nerve of posterior compartment of forearm and forearm so it supplies all the muscles in the posterior compartment of arm and forearm it has already given the branches to the three heads of the triceps in the arm it has given three branches to the three heads of the triceps muscle long head medial head and lateral head so this three branches are important for the extension of elbow extension of elbow which is caused by the three heads of the triceps muscle when it comes in between the brachialis and brachioradialis we have learned it supplies the brachialis muscle and also the brachioradialis before it divides into two branches it also supplies two muscles extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis so you students should note this before it divides two muscles are supplied extensor carpi radialis longus which causes the mainly the extension of the wrist so it is also given over the lateral epicondyle of the humerus over the lateral epicondyle of the humerus these branches are given before it divides into two terminal branches over the lateral epicondyle in the arm so these three branches these three muscles are supplied directly by the radial nerve brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis are supplied directly by the radial nerve remaining muscles in the posterior part of the forearm are supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve so remaining muscles are supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve so these are the very important points in the branches you have to learn so in this posterior interosseous nerve supplies all the other muscles you should know the muscles name then only you can understand anconius have been already supplied by the directly by the radial nerve so we have to add another muscle anconius directly supplied by the radial nerve this posterior interosseous nerve supplies the supinator before it pierces then it supplies extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi extensor indices extensor carpi ulnaris deep muscles abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis so all these muscles are directly supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve this, so this all these muscles will come under the back of forearm muscles this brachioradialis here four muscles we have written 
and all these other modules will be present in the posterior part of the forearm so this posterior intraosseous nerve supplies the extensor digitorum which is mainly for the extension of the wrist extension of the digits so we have to learn at, because why i am telling this clearly is if the radial nerve is affected at what level what are the muscles and what are the movements going to be affected you should know so in the arm extension of elbow this three heads of triceps is given in the over the lateral condyle brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus and this extensor carpi radialis brevis so this causes the extension of the wrist in the arm extension of the elbow over the lateral epicondyle extension of the wrist if the posterior intraosseous nerve is affected only extension of the digits is going to be affected this posterior intraosseous nerve ends in the extensor retinaculum as a ganglia so that is the termination of the deep branch superficial branch we have told already it enters the dorsum of the hand to supply the skin over the dorsum of the hand so we have seen the cores and branches now again we will summarize this radial nerve how to remember this radial nerve summary cores passes through the lower triangular space lower triangular space in spiral groove pierces the lateral intermuscular septum anterior enters the anterior compartment of the arm then between brachialis and brachioradialis between brachialis and brachioradialis anterior to the lateral epicondyle divides into superficial and deep branches so this is the summary summary of the course of the radial nerve you can remember in seven points this radial nerve as it arises from the posterior part of the brachial plexus which has all the roots in it so it is c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 it supplies all the muscles in the posterior arm and posterior forearm so what are the muscles in the arm is it supplies triceps three heads triceps three heads are supplied cutaneous branches in the arm are the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm posterior cutaneous nerve of arm posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm muscles which are supplied by the radial nerve in the forearm are the brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis and anconius these muscles are directly supplied by the radial nerve this along with the triceps it gives one branch to the front of the arm muscle brachialis also posterior intraosseous nerve supplies the other other extensor muscles of the forearm other extensors superficial branch supplies the dorsum of the lateral part of the hand and lateral 3 and 1/2 digits lateral 3 and 1/2 digits except the nail bud which is supplied by the median nerve so this is the summary of the branches of the radial nerve applied anatomy very important applied anatomy is the saturday night palsy saturday night palsy when a person who is who has taken alcohol and it is very he is very drowsy putting his arm axilla over the arm rest of a chair so that the radial nerve is affected in this posture and mainly this alcohol intake is taken on saturday it is called as saturday night palsy so if it is affected in axilla all the motor supply of the radial nerve is going to be affected which is going to cause the wrist drop 
so the extension of the wrist is affected and that will be called as the wrist drop if it is affected in the lower part then the triceps extension of elbow will be spared but in the saturday night palsy extension of elbow is also affected and it is total paralysis of the muscles of the back of arm and back of forearm so we have to know first the branches correctly then we can appreciate at what level it is injured then what are the muscles going to be affected so in this radial nerve you try to remember one important applied aspect saturday night palsy we have covered the radial nerve in very detail in this two parts radial nerve 1 and 2 you observe all the important points which i have told as a summary in all the three nerves that is very important if you remember just this six to seven points which i have i have given in all the three nerves as a summary then it will be very much useful for you we will continue with the other topic in the upper limb we will see in the next video those who have not subscribed to the channel do subscribe now keep watching the videos thank you